Hey there everyone, Eskew here, and today we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Ram's Corner Pressure. We're going to be talking about your go-to block strings, we're going to be talking about some mix-ups. We're even going to be talking about how to defend against Ram, so if you've been getting cooked up by some Ram players and you're trying to figure out what you can do better, this video should be helpful to you. We're only going to be going over the essentials, the things that you actually need to really improve your pressure with Ram, so we're not going to be talking about everything today. Specifically, we're going to be talking about one tool in her kit and how it's kind of the cornerstone of her offense, which is this move right here. The heavy version of her sword toss, 236H, or H sword as most people call it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to briefly talk about why H sword is so good and why it's so important to her offense, and then we'll start getting into specific applications like block strings and whatnot, and we'll take it from there. So why is H sword so good? It's basically a projectile, you know, Ram will throw out her sword and it'll travel all the way across the screen and then it will stick into the wall and after a set amount of time it will explode. On the surface, it's a projectile that auto-converts into a combo for you, which is already insane. Like having a projectile that just does this where you can run up and combo off of it is already super good. Another reason this move is so strong is because this part right here, the initial sword toss, this part is actually plus on block, it's plus three. This means that Ram has access to a special move that she can just kind of throw out whenever she wants to keep advantage in her pressure, which is pretty unique in this game. Not a lot of characters have a move like that that they can use. Now, there is a gap between the sword toss and it exploding. It's actually a, a, a decently sized gap. If we uh, set Ram to jump here, you'll see that she's able to just jump out of the explosion entirely. She doesn't have to respect it there. But... Because the sword toss itself is plus on block, we can actually stop her from jumping by pressing a button. Even if we set the ram to do something less like press 2k, she still can't get out. So you can't press a normal here and you can't jump out. You kind of have to respect it if ram is in range to press 2k or 5k. And if they just happen to block it, we're still at advantage because the sword just exploded. And this is pretty much how her pressure works because of the sword toss being plus and because of the sword explosion happening later. It really lets her keep advantage in a lot of situations and it's very strong. The last little detail to keep in mind about her sword toss is that it is technically a resource. After it explodes it will stick into the ground and then you either need to wait a certain amount of time to pick it back up or you need to walk over it and Ram will pick it up automatically. This is important to keep in mind when we start talking about block strings, as this is something you're going to want to accomplish during your block strings. Now that we understand why Sword is so good, now we can actually start talking about some of the applications it has. I'm going to show you one of your go-to block strings, and we're going to work off from that block string and start talking about other options after we understand how the block string works. So the first block string I recommend any RAM player learn, as it's very strong and it kind of requires your opponent to know how to deal with it, it is going to be close slash 236H 2K dash up close slash. So I'm going to do that on screen now. Just like that. Close slash H sword 2K dash up close slash. That block string right there I recommend every RAM player learning. As this is kind of the, the basis of where your pressure is going to start from, everything you do can kind of stem from here. Why is this block string so good? It's basically a series of very tight frame traps that the opponent can't mash out of. So if I set the dummy to try to press a button, I'm going to set her to do touching P. That right there is a frame trap, they can't mash out of it. There's not a button fast enough in the game to mash out of it. After the sword toss, this is also a frame trap. It's kind of hard to show this one with the dummy, but after this, this is also a true block string. They can't mash after the the 2k into the close slash. So it's just a series of really tight frame traps that the opponent can't mash out of, and it allows you to get right back in their face and keep applying pressure. Beyond that, however, what really makes the block string so strong is that remember I said you can pick up the sword by walking over it. If you look at that block string right there, I actually got my sword back. This means you can actually just kind of loop this over and over, and it's up to the opponent to know how to get out of it. This makes it an extremely strong layer 1 option, as it's more on the opponent to know what to do than you. 
So the question now is, what do you actually do about this block stream? Because obviously it can't be broken, right? There has to be a way to get out of it, because if there wasn't, Ram would just be way too good and she'd be winning everything. So what do you do? The first thing I recommend pretty much anyone do when it comes to defending against Ram is learning how FD affects her strings. FD being faultless defense. So if we take that same string we were just doing, but we have the dummy FD, we're no longer in range to press 2k. It won't hit them. Even if we press 5k, we won't be in range to hit them. What this allows the opponent to do is they can now jump out of the pressure. Or they can dash out of the pressure. Those are like the two main options they can represent in this situation. So if I go have the dummy, set to jump. Right, we're not in range to stop them from jumping here. We're too far away. So what can Ram do about this? What are the ways to stop the opponent from FDing or take advantage of them for FDing? The first thing you can do, and this is something that I don't think a lot of people know that Ram can do, if you have dash momentum, it actually changes the spacing you're left at. If we don't dash at all, this is the spacing we're left at. We can't press the button, right? So we're not in range. But if we have dash momentum before we do it, we're actually left way closer to the opponent and now we can actually frame trap them. This is a really important detail about Ram's pressure and something you need to keep in mind at all times, both as the attacker and the defender. Obviously, you're not always able to get dash momentum, but usually after like a combo or a knockdown or something, you have time to run up and get some dash momentum before doing your block string. So as an example, if I did something like this, now we're in range to do that block string. Now that's not all the ways that FD can affect the block string either. Even if you have dash momentum, if they continue to FD, and they FD your 5k or your 2k after that string, another issue actually arises here. Now we have to run a longer distance before we can run in and press close slash and get our sword back, and there is actually a throwable gap here now. If we set the dummy to do this and we FD it, we can throw her now. So now this creates a mind game of the ramp player now has to decide whether she wants to risk dashing up to get the sword back, or does she want to do something else to punish you going for a throw? Some of the things that Ram can do to punish somebody for going for a throw here would just be to dash up and press 2k a little bit early to catch them standing up to do the throw. You can also, of course, just dash up a little bit, not all the way, and let them whiff their throw and then punish the whiff throw. Or another thing you can do is you can dash up and then do instant air backdash into JS and that will also punish them for trying to throw. That also gets you your sword back, so that's also good to keep in mind. Another option that is very underrepresented by Ram players. Personally, the thing I think might be the strongest that you can do after throwing the sword, quite literally, is nothing. I'm not even kidding. If you just sit here and do nothing after throwing the sword, I think this is incredibly strong. So first of all, the opponent is already scared that you can press a button here, right? There's an implied threat that you can frame trap them. There's also the implied threat that the sword's going to explode eventually, so you don't even need to worry about holding them down because the sword will do it for you. Now you might think, well, what if they press a button? Isn't that a bad thing? Because you're not frame trapping them, they could press a normal now. Well, if we set her to press a button, Something important to note about the sword, it does not go away if you block. So if you're just sitting here and they mash a button, you'll block it and the sword will punish them for you. You don't have to do anything. Now another option they can do is they can use, uh, they can jump out of it, right? Now this is a, a safe thing for the opponent to do because you can't directly punish it just by sitting here. But it's not like you can't, you know, do something to keep them locked down, right? If you watch my matches, you see me do stuff like this all the time. I'll throw the sword, I'll wait, and I'll dash up and like air to air them or something. Or you just throw the sword, you let them jump, and then you 6p. And they're back down on the ground and you can apply pressure more. It's just important to keep in mind that you don't always have to do something after you throw the sword. Sometimes you can just sit there and not do anything and watch what the opponent does and react to them accordingly. Another advantage that doing nothing lets you do is it lets you maintain having dashing momentum. Right, just like this. Because I'm not going to end up getting pushed back because I'm not pressing 5k. So I'm never going to have to worry about that situation where maybe I can get thrown 
because you just sit there, you wait for a second, and then you sit there and you do it again, and you just keep doing it that way. This is a good way to kind of challenge the opponent to do something. When it comes to ram pressure, you're not really that focused on trying to mix them up or hit them. You're trying to keep them there and try to punish them for trying to leave. The other thing to keep in mind is you don't always have to throw the sword. Sometimes I'll just hit close slash and try to react to whether my opponent FD'd or not. Or not even react, just guess to what they might be trying to do. And just do close slash into dash up close slash again. Close slash into dash up throw. You don't always have to throw the sword. Some people get so focused on you doing the same block string over and over that they're not going to be ready for you to just dash up and throw them or something. Or sometimes you just do a normal block string. You don't always have to throw the sword. Even though it's ideal, sometimes it's best not to always throw it to keep your opponent guessing at what you're going to do. Another defensive option that the opponent can use is actually using 6p to beat the sword. So if we go set the dummy to do 6p, what you'll notice is that you can actually 6p ram out of the sword toss here. Now this is risky for a number of reasons, but it is something that some people will try to do, and it does have some merit. In this situation, if the ram would delay special cancel their 6p, she'd be able to combo off of it and get out of the corner and start her turn. So what can ram do about someone trying to 6p her block string? There's two main ways to deal with it, and one is, again, kind of obvious. You just don't cancel the sword and you do something else. You do close slash into delay 2s, that's the thing I usually do. And it will just counter hit them and then they'll explode. Now what if you want to be able to still throw the sword, but you don't want to have to worry about getting 6p'd? One thing you can do is if you actually delay your H sword, you can beat 6p's by doing it that way. So again, if we just immediately throw the sword, we'll just lose cleanly and it's that. But what happens if we delay it slightly? It traded. So there's a little bit of a quirk with how Ram's sword works. Her sword is coded not to go away if she gets hit while it's traveling. So in this situation, because we're actually delaying our sword toss, we're causing it to happen to where we get 6p'd while it's still traveling, so it will trade favorably with the 6p, and they'll no longer have the upper body invul that they have from the 6p as well. And you can actually combo off the trade. You can just run up and do whatever combo you want to do. Now, technically, since we are delaying the sword, there is a bigger gap here that the opponent could mash out of. So if I have the ram set to do 5p here, she'll hit me out of it. But this is actually spacing specific and it also depends on the range of the button that they used. So if I don't have dash momentum when I do this, it will trade in our favor instead of just losing. So it kind of depends on the matchup, what button the opponent even has to press. So it's up to the opponent to even know what move they should use. Basically, it doesn't always lose to the mashing, and it can vary based on the spacing, which again goes back to the fact that spacing actually matters a lot for Ram's block strings. Something you've probably thought about during this video is what about invincible reversals? What about characters who have DPs like Soul? So normally, if you just immediately cancel the sword, this would actually lose to HDP. Soul will just be able to HDP through it and you'll be sad. You're going to take a, a shit ton of damage and you'll be very sad. But if we slightly delay the sword toss, it actually trades. Because again, it doesn't go away if it's traveling when Ram gets hit. Now in the case of Soul's HDP, you can actually combo off of it, which is really funny. That's not true for most DPs. But if we go and switch to another character, if we switch to Kai here and have him do the same thing, you'll see that his DP loses. We can't get up and combo off of it like we could for Soul's HDP, but we do still get to get up and apply more pressure again. So having a DP can be good, especially after blocking the sword. But again, you know, after they block the sword, you can just do nothing. You don't always have to press the button, right? The sword will go off no matter what for you. It'll punch their DP for you. And if they do nothing, the sword will explode and you can take your turn. So DPs are nice to have against Ram, but they're not quite as strong as you might think. The last defensive option we need to talk about in regards to Ram's sword pressure is, funnily enough, dashing. You'll notice that you can actually just dash out of the explosion and it doesn't catch you. This is something that very few people are currently doing, but I think it is actually one of the better ways to defend against Ram's pressure and it gives you a couple of advantages. 
One thing about dashing in this game is you can actually block right after inputting a dash. So in this case, if I do Sword Toss and then press 2k, she'll be able to block it. Right? Now, for a human, that'll be a little bit harder to time because you have to do it manually, but you can theoretically dash block and be safe in this situation. One of the reasons that dash blocking is good is that the ram player does something like I was just talking about where you just do nothing. It actually gets you out of the sword explosion so you don't have to block that frame advantage. And it puts the sword behind you, which now makes it difficult for the ram player to actually get the sword back because you're in her way. If she wants to get the sword in this situation, she's going to have to push you all the way back to the corner to get it. Now, she can just keep you blocking if you're just doing dash blocking, but you know, you're not really taking a big risk by trying to dash block out of the sword explosion. So just keep it in mind as like a, a safer option that you can go for. If the ramp player ends up committing to something kind of more preemptive, if they try to like catch you jumping out with a JP or something, you'll just dash under them and then now you're out of the corner. So it's definitely a good option to keep in mind for sure. The last real defensive option we can talk about against Ram Sword Pressure is actually YRC. YRC is very strong against Ram Sword Pressure because it's pretty hard for her to bait. If she just does something like Close Slash into H Sword, you can just YRC it and it will cancel out the Sword Pressure and you'll get your turn. And something to keep in mind is when you do YRC Ram, it actually makes it to where she can't get her sword back. I don't know if this is intended, but it is actually pretty annoying when it comes to dealing with YRC because I just can't get my sword back until it manually comes back to me. In regards to baiting YRC as the RAM player, there's a couple of different things you can do. Because your main pressure tool is usually going to be close slash, you can actually jump cancel the close slash in anticipation of a YRC. But this is a hard read, you can't do this on a reaction or anything. And you kind of are giving up your offense a little bit if you're doing this. You also can't really punish it if you do this. Sometimes you can 5k it if you land in time. But that's pretty much all you get. You can get 5k into Daro and that's really all you're going to get. Alternatively, you can try to press buttons that have lower recovery, something like a 2k. And you actually recover in time to block the YRC and you can punish it that way. So if the opponent does have 50 meter, you might want to reconsider how you structure your offense a little bit, which can get us into the idea of freestyling your offense. This entire time we've been talking about using specific block strings, you know, doing close slash into 2k, that type of thing. One of the big benefits of Ram's pressure is that while she does have, you know, specific block strings that you can lean on, She's also extremely good at just improvising block strings on the fly. So something else you can do is something like 2k 2d into sword toss. This is good because you can just end on the 2k and you'll bait wire seats. This is a two hit low string, so it'll catch somebody trying to up back or somebody trying to mash throw. You can also do something like this, close slash into 2s if they don't FD. You're actually still in range to be able to 2k them. There's a lot of different ways to go about her offense. I just recommend, for starters, sticking to this type of block string. And as you get more comfortable with things and you start understanding how characters defend against Ram, you can start implementing other things into your offense. When it comes to freestyling your pressure as well, don't forget to mix in throws occasionally. You can actually throw them between Sword Toss and the Sword Explosion, which is really cheap. A lot of people just kind of respect this and you can sneak in a lot of throws. And that's pretty much it for Ram's Corner Pressure. Those are all the essential things you really need to know. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. If you have any questions or any feedback, you can also catch me live on Twitch. I do stream quite frequently. I'll have links to all of those down in the description. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.